the blower for the, uh, the ventilation, the heating system, uh, was completely inoperative regardless of which uh, speed he selected. Um, the follow-up to the story is later in the day, it seemed to be working fine. Right, so what does that mean? Ten things don't t tend to fix themselves. So I thought, well, I'll take a look at the diagram and um, we'll think about this and see if we can poke around a little bit as a, I mean, as a pandemic after all, there's no great deal to do, let's be honest. So uh, you go looking for it to entertain yourself. So I thought I would uh, just bring you guys along for the ride, so to speak. It, it may prove fruitless and we'll find nothing, in which case that's fine as well. As long as the system works, it's okay. And it, eventually it will show its face again, I'm sure. But in the meantime, let's just consider the circuit here, guys. So uh, this is the SX4 2007. It is a manual air conditioning, um, the manual type as opposed to the climate control type or automatic. There is significant differences between the two, uh, but as far as we're concerned, uh, the issue would actually be, and this has an old school traditional resistor block as far as uh, fan speed control is concerned. Um, the newer style <clears throat> alters the voltage which is applied to the, the ground side of the motor in order to control the speed. Anyway, that's academic. Let's focus on the one that we actually have to deal with. So I've color-coded this diagram in this manner, guys. It may help some of you guys who are not familiar. This is not a complicated circuit by any stretch of the imagination. But for guys who are not used to this kind of thing, it can be um, daunting to look at a drawing like this and try and wrap your head around things. We, we don't need to consider this entire drawing, guys, right? All I'm focusing on is the function of the fan itself. Actually, item two here, right? We had a completely inoperative fan in any speed, and then the the operation of the fan was restored. That in itself speaks to what kind of failure we're actually dealing with, and I'll get to that a wee bit later in the video. Here's the battery. Um, this is actually the uh, underhood fuse block, guys, item 17. So we have power that comes down on two lines here. Again, you can see there's two red lines. Uh, one red line actually stops at item one, which is the ignition switch. Um, the ignition switch, as you can imagine, if the car is in the off position, uh, the car shut down, you don't want your blower fan running, right? And it switched power through the uh, ignition switch applied to uh, item five here, which is a relay, which is in the kick panel inside the car. We'll get back to that in just a second. Again, power comes through, unswitched to the relay itself. So again, pretty standard for relays. There's actually two power supplies. One is a control and one is a load. So you can see here um, that all it takes is uh, for the ignition switch to be in either accessory or run and this coil will energize pulling up this this um, uh, contact on the relay. Not necessarily powering the fan, that will depend on what's happening on the ground side. So let's assume we have power come down here, we're in the let's say run position, the car is actually running, we can expect to see power down to the motor. What about the ground side? Uh, again, most cars that I'm familiar with from this vintage, some closing in on 15 years ago, uh, kind of as, as a safety mechanism, uh, let's say, shall we call it, actually in high speed position, let's say this top contact here, guys, uh, if you were in the maximum uh, position four, I believe it is on the panel in the SX4, manual air conditioning, uh, you'll have a direct ground, um, and by direct ground, it's not direct, it's actually switched, but it grounds, the ground will apply itself to the ground side of the motor. And the blower, of course, is not going through any, the resistor block here. Uh, there's no additional load in the circuit and you'd have maximum current. So the motor would blow, uh, the motor would spin the fan at maximum speed. You'd have maximum airflow inside the uh, vehicle. So that's kind of done as a safety in the event you do have a failure of the resistor block. And these resistor blocks do in fact fail. They tend to overheat. They're in the uh, plenum. Uh, the duct work at the car for a reason that actually provides cooling airflow uh, when these are brought into the circuit as you can see if you select any of the other positions one two or three you actually are grounding the motor through uh, the resistor block the, the lower the, the numerically that you select the more the resistance the slower the fan it controls the current obviously by dumping some of the 12 volts the battery voltage uh, in the resistor bank I think that's fairly straightforward so what's wrong with this 
if it operated you know, in an intermittent manner, um, I think it's fairly safe and it operates in all speeds apparently. I haven't checked it myself, but uh, my son tells me it's all speeds. Can we make the assumption that the resistor block must be functional? It didn't fix itself if the resistors tend to burn out. Yes, it's possible we have an intermittency at the connector of some sort. Uh, that's possible, but I doubt it. Um, what about um, the relay? Is it possible we have an intermittency at the relay? Of course it is. Certainly uh, possible. Uh, we have an issue at the contacts here. It's possible we have an intermittency within the ignition switch. That's a possibility. Um, what about the motor itself? This car is, as I said, heading towards 15 years old now, guys. It's got over 300,000 on the clock. This motor has done a lot of spinning. The commutator and the brushes are probably in marginal condition. If I had to, uh, um, I don't want to say guess, but let, let's say guess. If I had to guess where the uh, issue is in this vehicle, I would suspect that the brushes on the commutator are in marginal condition. And it's possible we, if the motor just happens to stop in a dead spot, we may lose the blower function. It's a possibility. Uh, just the motion of the car may have moved this sufficient that the, the brushes and the commutator have actually got um, continuity again. And now the blower will operate until it stops in that dead spot again. That's what I suspect is wrong with the vehicle. Um, yeah, so what can we actually check? If we go to the vehicle and everything appears to be operating normally, what can we check? Well, I want to put on my clamp on at meter here and see what this actually looks like. Uh, for you guys who are not new to the channel, um, you may be familiar with uh, some of the current waveform uh, videos I've done in the past. We can take a look at the current waveform on the, the draw on the on the motor, and that will speak volumes to the health of the uh, the motor, um, more specifically the the commutator and brush condition. We can uh, take a look at that. And uh, yeah, we'll just we can look at a drop across the resistor. Um, that's possible. Maybe even pull the resistor out. We can do a, check the resistance across the uh, contacts. Um, it's going to be kind of difficult to do a voltage drop test, will it? Well, maybe not. Maybe we can get here and here, which is across the contacts of the relay, and uh, we can check the differential and voltage. There shouldn't be any if this relay is in good condition. So I hope that makes some sense, guys. Let's go to the car and see what we can Specification, see. Specification, max current uh, should be 18.5 amps. That would be in the high speed mode, of course. And we are not going to be in that temperature range. The garage is nowhere near that temperature. It's close to zero. So uh, we'll take that number with a grain of salt. You need to be in the run position. So as you can hear, the fan is actually functional in all speeds, right? So apparently it will not present at the moment. So let's get a look underneath the uh, passenger's uh, footwell there. The uh, fan is accessible there, and we'll take a look to see what the story is with the uh, access to the harness. Okay, so here is the fan here, guys, and I'm not sure if you can actually see the wiring harness there. It is in an awkward spot, and there's a little cover that actually covers the uh, connector. So that's going to be uh, to split the, the uh, sheath there so we can actually get the uh, current clamp around just uh, one wire is going to be awkward. So why do that? We have an alternative. If this is difficult to access, we only need access to one wire. In fact, we can only use one wire if we're going to use a clamp on that meter. Uh, if you clamp around both, you're going to get nothing. They'll just basically null each other. Um, so we only need access to one wire. If this ultimately ends up at the chassis ground, um, isn't that the same as that chassis ground? Everything will ultimately lead back to the battery, right? So if we turn the key to the run position, then put the clamp on amp meter around the ground strap of the battery, then zero it with the fan in the, uh, in the off position. As we step up through the speeds of the fan, we should be able to monitor the current draw on the fan, yeah? Let's see if that's an option. Okay guys, so you can see here on the car, at the battery ground strap, it's actually a split ground, right? There's one that goes to the chassis, and there's one that actually goes down, I think you can see it there on the far right, near the center of the picture. That's the uh, lug that actually goes onto the gearbox, the uh, engine and gearbox ground, if you will. So, let's uh, zero the clamp on that mirror here.
zero. We may see some marginal draw here. The body control module might be, uh, or other modules might be actually returning some current uh, while the car is in semi sleep mode at the moment. So that's neither here nor there. Let's put the car into, or the run position, if you will. And there you can see here that we actually have X amount of current draw. We're not interested in this current draw. Uh, the, cat, the, the fan current is going to return through this ground wire. I don't think it's going to go through the block. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? So it'll come through the uh, chassis through this wire. So it should be reflected on here. So let's zero this. Now the meter is going to ignore all the other ancillaries that we're running and we're only going to see the fan current. Position four. So this is our maximum current running right there. 11.3 amps. All this to prove we can monitor the current here. We don't need to go under the dash. We'll make it simple on ourselves. It didn't get any simpler than right here. Okay, see if you can dig it, guys. <clears throat> Same setup. I've switched to the uh, scope, uh, the hand tech. Uh, to a C42 in this case, um, so we can actually see uh, with greater resolution what the actual uh, motor is actually doing, uh, i.e. the brushes and the commutator on the motor. So same setup. <clears throat> um, what the scale I've actually got it set on here, guys, is uh, 200 millivolts. So that is for every five uh, units on the graticule, that's going to be 10 amps. We know that it roughly draws just over 11 amps, so it should be just over five-ish five-ish uh, units on the graticule right so i'll do the same thing <clears throat> i'll go in i'll turn the car on to the uh, run position we'll zero the uh, clamp on amp meter and that will give us our baseline and then we can uh, look at the various current draws on the scope on the uh, uh, for the different settings on the fan speed <clears throat> Position one, speed two, speed three, and speed four. So what we're looking at there is the actual segments on the motor. And there kind of surprisingly is no dropouts. If there was a bad segment on the commutator or the brush, the brush and commutator combination didn't like a particular segment on the motor. Uh, as I had theorized at the beginning of the video, you'd see the dropout, the current would drop down to nothing. And if you do the count there, guys, and do the conversion, I think we're looking at, uh, yeah, just over 10 amps, 11 amps-ish. So that, that does actually make sense. So if you look at the humps and you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then back to 1, that hump there and that hump there look the same to me. I think there's probably uh, 8 segments on the blower and again point being there is no dropout nothing is dropping to zero doesn't appear to be uh, any issue at the moment okay so before we uh, call it a day and say well I guess we give up and we can't find anything intermittents are kind of that's the nature of them right sometimes you get I won't say again I won't say lucky but sometimes you get to duplicate them and other times not so much so it's possible that this relay uh, the contacts are actually starting to go um, so what I'd like to check is actually the voltage drop across these two contacts on the relay itself. Jumping. Oh, it's a bugger in here. Just bear with me a second here, guys, to get this in again. Here we go. I hope you can see that. There's actually two probes in there. So I'm going across the contacts on the relay. <clears throat> Let me get you focused back on the... Okay. So we're still in the run position. And as we draw more and more current through the fan that voltage drop would in should increase that would be normal I would say so there's the ma at max that that's 11 amps draw there's a 0.2 of, 0.2 of a voltage drop across the meter so I think that's it we're gonna call it good for now if it reoccurs we'll uh, take a wee bit deeper I hope that made some sense boys cheers <laughs>